Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, this is going to be a build video a lot of people are probably uh, looking forward to. This is the build that I am using for my current XP farm that I showed everyone these last two days. I first showed you how to do this in a group. Um, the fastest way would be with two people. The most efficient way would be with four people, but you can do it solo. And not only that, but I am getting 26 levels per run. Now, I see in the comments a lot of people are like, oh, I only get 10 levels. I only get 8 levels. Yo, man, I only got 6 levels. No, there, there's something going wrong with you guys, man. So here, let, let me just show you really quick what I'm talking about. All right, now these are clips on my Xbox. So if you are following me on Xbox, you have access to all of these clips. And these are my most recent four clips. This was one run uh, doing this on normal with no directives. And then I just wanted you to see right here, we are at 4224 for the level. Okay, so this was on normal. So that's 4224. Now let's fast forward to this clip. We're at 4229. So we're only at plus five. Oh, plus six. And it's going up really fast. Okay. Now remember, we were at 24. Okay. In this clip, we're at 39. Okay. And then let's watch this final clip. So we go from 40 to 24, okay? Let's see what the final score is. And then I just pick up the, uh, I pick up the gear and just kill myself at the end. Because it's going to reset you anyways, so you might as well. Now remember, you gain all of those extra levels at the end, right here. Boom. Alright, so 40 to 24... And now we're at 4250. So that took 26 levels in one run. That's what that just gave me. 26 levels in one run. So that, that's what we're looking at with this build. All right. Did you see that? 26 levels in less than 25 minutes. Because remember, we died and reset before the timer even finished. So it was under 25 minutes that I got 26 levels. That is more than a, a, what, a level a minute. Now, for everyone wondering, how does he do it? What, what happened? What were you doing? It's all about the kills. For each of these runs, I am averaging about 2,700 to 3,000 kills per run. Now, if you need to look at some sort of leaderboard to double check your progress, come over here to leaderboards, go to world, and then go down to black tusk members defeated. Because remember, in this Anderson mission, they are all black tusk enemies. Now, if I go over to my clan, I'm currently sitting at 114,000 black tusk enemies defeated now you can see that's not really too much for uh people in my clan but that's how you're going to be able to um you know figure out how many kills you're getting per run because this is the number that will change due to the fact that all of those enemies in that anderson mission are black tusk enemies so if you're averaging around 2700 members killed each run you're going to get you know 25 26 levels um it's just all based off of how many kills you get and then you know getting all of that kill xp but with all that said and done let's go ahead and jump into this shall we all right here we go What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 build video. Now shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And in today's build video, I'm going to show you my Oxidizer build that I am using solo to do the newest and greatest XP farm. I'm, not, I'm saying newest just because it's being popular right now. This has been out since Anderson Mission came out. This has been out. 
It's nothing new. And in fact, the Anderson mission is not the only farm you could do this strategy. You can do this with resource convoys, certain resource convoys. You can do the this with any sort of mission, stronghold, anything that gives you an objective and then has infinite spawns while that objective is active because that's all we're doing with this Anderson mission, right? Is that we're keeping that objective active. We're not taking out the jammer and then we're just taking out those NPCs as fast as possible. Now, before, when I would talk about this farm, I would say, you know, my cloud duration for my oxidizer is really long, so I could, you know, take my time and do this and that. Um, it is true, you can. However, if you are only shooting two oxidizers at a time and then waiting for those clouds to go away and then shooting two more at a time, you're going to kill those enemies, but it's going to be slow. It's going to be a slow burn where if you watch a lot of my gameplay, I'm rapid firing these oxidizer charges. I'm like shooting, you know, 10 at a time and then waiting. And then I'd shoot like 10 at a time because they stack. And that's why you would see those enemies die so fast is that I'm stacking all of those oxidizer charges on top of each other and on top of each other and everything just dies instantly. Where you could shoot, you know, a couple charges and wait and let that cloud just do the work for you, but it's gonna be a lot slower, therefore you're not gonna get as many kills, and then you're not gonna get as much kill XP. And that's why I'm getting these 26 levels per run, because I'm, you know, I'm getting all those kills really fast. Now at the end of this, after the build breakdown, I'm gonna show you me getting just about 60 levels in an hour. So there's gonna be a lot of gameplay at the end of this showing you exactly how I do all of this solo. But with all that said and done, let's jump into the build breakdown. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. But this is gonna be my XP farm build um, for solo players. Now, obviously you could use this in a team setting. It doesn't matter, but you can do this solo. This is what I use when I uh, do the farm solo. Now, let's start off at the top. So we're using the technician specialization. Now, the reason we are using the technician specialization is for the artificer hive. Now, a lot of people are saying use a decoy or use a turret or what have you. I use the Artificer Hive because it gives us that buff and it never goes away. We will never run out of Artificer charges at all. It is all about getting those oxidizers downrange and killing those enemies as fast as possible. I don't care about the turret because I'm not having any enemies run out of the spawn. They are all dying instantly. That's how I'm getting those 25, 26 levels every time I do a run, is that I am getting those kills fast. I'm not letting them leave the spawn or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about using another skill. So just stick with your oxidizer, and the best thing for your oxidizer is going to be that artificer hive. All right. Now for the Oxidizer, hey, I actually just leveled this sucker up, 10 levels. That's right, this thing is expertise level 10, so now I'm hitting even harder. I didn't even think about that. This whole time I've been doing the farm, I didn't think that you know upgrading the Oxidizer would actually help, but it does. It increases your damage. So sitting here, you can see that I am at eight for the ammo. I have 10.5 cooldown a 14.3 duration, but then 198k base for that damage. Now with the tech support and everything else active, I get this thing to hit 395k per tick. And then on average for normal ticks, I'm around 350. So it ranges from 350 to 395, but that 395 is with everything active. It's amazing, truly. Okay, so enough about the specialization and the skills. Let's talk about the build. Now, for the weapons, you can really use whatever you want. It's an oxidizer build. You are not really using your weapon 
except for the very beginning of the mission. That is the only time you're using your weapon. However, talents and things like that from your weapon do apply to your oxidizer. So, for that, I am using the Glory Days. There's one for sale right now at the Countdown Vendor, so you can pick it up. And uh, if I were a betting man, I would say that Cassie Mendoza will sell one tomorrow. Now, the reason I'm using the Glory Days is for the talent Perfect Nearsighted. It gives you 100% stability at the cost of optimal range. Well, your Oxidizer doesn't really care about optimal range, and it does really you know like that stability so whenever i'm using this you can see that the oxidizer the chem launcher isn't moving it's really steady the only time that it's not steady is when i'm lagging really hard but yeah use the glory days you can also do this with a multi you know multiple different weapons um but glory days test subject capacitor you know use whatever it is you want but remember it's just an oxidizer build you you should not be using your weapon for the secondary and sidearm, use whatever you want. Again, doesn't matter. It's an oxidizer build. Now, looking at the build itself, we have three pieces of Empress International, two pieces of Hana Yu, and then one piece of Wyvern. Now, a lot of people were saying, you know, use the waveform. Now, if you look right here, here it is, the waveform holster. Now, yes, you could use the waveform holster, and yes, you could get more damage when the hourglass is on, you know, the oxidizer side. Because when the hourglass is not on the oxidizer side, you're actually hitting lower than you would ever think. Um, and for that reason, I'm not going to use it. Because uh, the waveform is good when you're using two skills to get the job done. But in this XP farm, with this build and this mechanic... We are only using the oxidizer. So we shouldn't be using our weapons. We shouldn't be using other skills. We shouldn't be using the waveform because it's all about that oxidizer. How do we get that oxidizer to hit as hard as humanly possible while utilizing that skilled talent to keep getting our chargers back? So this is essentially an unlimited oxidizer build um, with pure damage. Now, with that, I did change up the backpack. Before I was using Murakami, so right here, I can show you side by side. So before I was using the Murakami with skill damage, skill haste, and tech support for that skill duration. However, after doing this time and time again and doing some tweaks here and there, I have noticed that the skill duration does not matter. You, you don't need skill duration on your build at all. In fact, the more damage, the better. So with this setup, I'm trying to hit as hard as possible while using skilled on my chest piece. Because remember, I can't use glass cannon, perfect glass cannon, anything like that. I'm using skilled. That way I get my oxidizers back immediately. But everything else is for skill damage and skill haste. Now doing a deep dive, let's start with the mask. Now we have a Hanayu mask here. The Hanayu brand set bonuses we get from this build 10% skill haste and 10% skill damage. Now this one obviously comes with that skill tier. Max skill damage and skill haste for the attributes with a max skill haste mod. The other piece of Hanayu are the knee pads. This one, skill tier, skill damage, and skill haste. Next up, we have our three Empress International, starting with the holster. Now, the Empress International brand set bonuses from this build, skill health, skill damage, and skill efficiency, all 10%. Now, out of all of those, the most important are the skill damage and the skill efficiency. Now again, comes with a skill tier, max skill haste, and skill damage. Next piece of Empress is uh, the gloves. Max skill damage, max skill haste. And then the last piece of Empress International, the chest piece. Now this one, 11.4 on the skill haste, so you can get this one a little bit faster. And then max skill damage with a max skill haste mod. 
Again, it's all about skilled for that chess piece talent. Please put this on the build. It is very important. That way you can get those unlimited oxidizers. Now skilled. Skill kills have a 25% chance to reset your cooldowns. Now, you are getting so many kills that you're going to get this to proc a lot. So much so that you feel like it's immediate. And it's amazing because it makes you feel like you have unlimited oxidizers and you can just keep shooting and shooting and shooting until the whole game lags out if you want. All right, so that's the Empress International. We already did the Hanayu, so the last piece is our Wyvern. Now, this is a the Wyvern Backpack. Now, Wyvern Wear, brand set bonus for this build, 10% skill damage, comes with a skill tier. We have skill haste and skill damage maxed out for the attributes with a max skill haste mod. Now, the talent is important. We are not using calculated because skilled does the work for us. So we want something that gives us more damage. Now, tech support, doing this XP farm, you will have tech support active the entire time. The reason being is you are getting so many kills that this thing just keeps reprocking over and over and over and over and over and over. Therefore, this talent is always active. So skill kills will increase your skill damage by 25% for 20 seconds. And that is tech support. And that's the build. That is how I get the oxidizer up to that 198.5k. And we're kicking butt, man. This is a really, really fun build. We're getting, what, 26 levels per run? I mean, jeez. Oh, I think if I did that for an entire hour straight, I could probably hit about, what, 65 to 70 levels in an hour? I mean, come on. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. But all right, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What I'm going to do is I am going to leave you with a hour-long gameplay of me getting 60 levels in an hour. So I hope you enjoy it. Hit that like, subscribe. I am Kamikaze Von Doom, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone. Peace. All right, now let's roll that lovely gameplay. Agent, Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Taurus for extraction. Agent, Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Taurus for extraction. Hostile radio intercepted. This better not be another false alarm. Hostiles at the perimeter. Just let him come. Tusk forces are on location and expecting you. This feels like a trap. Be careful, Agent.
vehicle to disable the EMP.
Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Torres for extraction. Agent, Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Torres for extraction. Hostile radio. Intercepted. It better not be another false alarm. Hostiles at the perimeter! Just let him come. Tusk forces are on location and expecting you. This feels like a trap. Be careful, Agent. Jammer detected nearby. They're using the Conley modifier. We're lucky our comms are still working. You'll need to take out those EMPs. Stay out of their line of sight. Accessing server. Fuel terminals detected nearby. Agent, you'll need to use the console to disable the EMP.
Agent, Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Torres for extraction. Agent, Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Torres for extraction. Hostile radio. Intercepted. This better not be another false alarm. Hostiles at the perimeter! Just let him come. Forces are on location and expecting you. This feels like a trap. Be careful, Agent. Our comms are still working. You'll need to take out those EMPs. Stay out of their line of sight. Accessing server. Field terminals detected nearby. Agent, you'll need to use the console to disable the EMPs.
Agent, Lewis's last known location was at the lab. Got word there's a Black Tusk hovercraft on their way to the plant. You need to recover Lewis and signal Torres for extraction.